In this video, I want to talk about several different options you have for submitting PDF forms, either to an email address or to a web server. And we have many different kinds of options, and I'll go run through several of those here in this video. If you take a look at the form I have on screen, up in the top right, I have these button fields that appear with a red fill color. And I'm, these are all individual actions that we can employ when submitting forms. And I'm going to go through these one by one. So beginning at the top here, I'm going to start out very easy. And I'm going to open this field. And let's take a look at the actions. And you can see that in the actions tab over here in my field properties, I have submit a form as an option. And that's accessible through this drop down menu here. So I can choose submit a form. When I do, go to edit and take a look at the options that I have. The one thing that you have to do is to type one line of code, and that's this line right here that says mail to colon and then an email address. That's all you have to do to submit a form via an email address. Now, configuring email addresses in Acrobat can be a little challenging. If you have a .com, a .edu, or a .org email address, you may need some assistance from your IT person at, at your office because you need to identify the incoming and outgoing servers if you don't know those. What you can also do is if you have social media email addresses, it's very easy to configure those and you'll have an option to do that when you submit the form. If I take a look below this line of code, you see that I have export format and I have four different options. This FDF stands for Form Data File. That's a proprietary format from Adobe Systems. And it submits just the field data. So the contents of the fields is what gets submitted. Then I have HTML, and I, this X FDF is a XML format. Most people are going to use either FDF or quite a few are going to use a complete PDF file. So if I want to send this form out to people and I want them to fill out the form and send it back to me, I would use FDF complete. And that's basically all you have to do for submitting a form in Acrobat. Now there's some other things that we can do that can help polish this up a little bit. I can also write a JavaScript. Let's open up this field right here and we'll take a look at the JavaScript code here. And this is just one line of code. And you see that I have this mail doc, true, and then an email address, and then these quotes have to do with a CC and a blind CC. Now, there are two different kinds. Well, actually, there's more than two. There, there are several different kinds of properties that you can add to a JavaScript. One, the most common are mail doc and mail form. If I use mail form, it's going to automatically submit or send FDF form data. If I use mail doc, it's going to send the whole PDF form. So keep that in mind. Anyway, it's a real easy line of code and you have no problem in submitting uh, or writing the code to submit a form using that script. You can just copy and paste that and don't forget you just want to change the email address. Now this next field, if I take a look at just executing this action by clicking on this button, you'll notice that a dialog box appears and it says no fields can be left empty and that's because I programmed it to check through all the fields and to see if any of the fields were empty. The, all of the fields are, happen to be empty now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to import my data because I've already exported that. And to do so, if you load the form tools, you see this more form options over here. That's one of the tools that you can load by going over to your tools menu. If I open this menu up, I can choose export and import data. So if I import data, my data here, and I load this data. You can see now the form fields are populated. If I click on this button again, even though I have these fields populated, you'll notice that also 
this dialog box opens again. And the reason for that is that I have a few fields on this form that aren't populated, namely these check boxes. Now, this is a precarious problem because if you want to make sure that someone fills in all the fields, then if you have check boxes or radio buttons that are either or kinds of responses that are being requested, one of those is always going to be left blank. And what I have in this second script here is if I click on this, you can see that I'm prompted in a dialog box here to identify my email address. And this would be, if I use webmail, I can use you know one of my social media accounts. I'll cancel out of this and just so I can show you the script. If I go back over here to my prepare form and we take a look at this script, I have a couple of things going on here. Number one, I'm actually using a function, this check field, the field. I use this function and that function, if you copy this and paste this script, you also need to add the JavaScript function. And I have that at the document level. So if I come over here to JavaScript, once again, I have this loaded in my palette over here. If you don't have it loaded, you can add that with more tools. So I click on JavaScript. I'll click on Document JavaScripts. And this is where I have that function. And it's really quite easy, or quite a simple function. I'm just basically checking to see if any of the fields are empty. And if the fields are not empty, then I can go ahead and execute the action. But if they are empty, then obviously I'm not going to be able to execute it. And that's when I'll get that dialog box. Now, if you take a look at the script over here, let's uh, close this and let's go to the script. I also have a line of code in here that eliminates searching through radio buttons and check boxes. And that is if the field is not text. So that would eliminate radio buttons, check boxes, button fields, digital signatures, things like that. Anything that's not a text field. And the reason you might use the first option where it doesn't check for a button or check fields is let's say you have a form and you're supposed to click a check box if you agree to terms or licensing agreements or something like that and there's no either or it's just a checkbox I have another field over here let's take a look at this script and this one is going to add automatically it's going to add a CC a blind CC a subject line and a body message to the the submit form. So if I were to click on that button, I would get a window that would say email is going to, and then it's going to fill in these other fields. It's going to send a blind CC, which means that the recipient that you target this for is not going to know who else you sent the f uh, form to. It's going to give a carbon copy to an individual, and that your recipient would know who that would be. And then it's going to add a subject line and a uh, body message. The next script over here is just a simple JavaScript. And this one has submit form. And if I use submit form, it's going to send FDF data, form data file data. And the reason you might want to do this is let's say you have a, a very heavy PDF document in terms of file size and it's going to take a long time to transmit that file to various users. Uh, let's say you had a, a listserv and you wanted to send the form out to many people. If you want that form returned to you, it might be easier for those people just to simply send you the data. And once you get the data, you would just import that data into a form if you want to have each one of those forms identified with the user as a form and not just take the data and uh, process the data. So you would receive the data and then you would go over here where I have more options and I would import the data in a form. Okay, that's if uh, you set it up for form data file. Next, 
I have another option over here. Let's take a look at the script in this one. And this one is creating an array. I may have a form where I only want certain fields exported. And in this particular case, if I have a field name, name, ID, and score, now I don't happen to have fields in here. This is just a script as an example. So none of these field names are apply to this particular form. But this will just give you an idea. You would just supply the names for fields you would want on your own PDF form. And then this is also going to send the form data to a server, a web server. Now, in order to do that, you can see that I have down here, I've got HTTP and then I've got CGI script. In order to have the server collect the data, you need your IT people, or if you're able to program it yourself, you need to have a CGI program on the server that will collect the data. Now, if you don't get into this, don't worry about it. You can use the other simpler forms of submitting a form. But if you're curious about this, you would need some help from your IT personnel if you're not a programmer yourself. And then lastly, I've got this last item here. And this one is a response dialog box that prompts the user for an email address. Now, the reason you might have a form like this is let's say you work in an enterprise and you've got, uh, let's say, a, a claim form, travel expense form. And that travel expense form needs to go to different supervisors. So basically, the user, the employee, would fill out this form. And then when they fill out the form, if they click this button, a dialog box and comes up and it prompts the user to enter an email address. So you would obviously know your supervisor's email address. You would type that email address in here and then this form would get processed, it would be submitted, and it would be submitted to the email address that you supply here. And this is the script that handles that. Right here. Just two lines of code Real easy to copy and paste this. I have a message here that pops up in the dialog box. You can change that message, anything you want to type within quotes here. And then I have uh, an, an application response dialog box. You don't have to worry about changing any of the uh, code there. And the dialog box will open, and the end user would then type in an email address. So these are several different ways that you can handle submitting a form in Acrobat. And I hope those of you who have a need to submit forms have found this somewhat helpful. Most of these JavaScripts you can copy and paste. Don't forget this single item over here, uh, the fourth one on the first column, requires that you add a document level JavaScript. So keep in mind the way you find that is to go on JavaScripts and click on Document JavaScripts here, and this is where you can copy and paste. The name that you supply here is incidental. All of this code needs to be copied exactly as you see it here. So that completes a little discussion on creating submit form buttons and how to submit uh, PDFs and data back to you when a re recipient takes one of your forms, you add a button on that form for that form to come back to you so that you can process the information. Hopefully it's been some help to you. And as always, this is Ted Padova wishing you all the very best in your PDF form creation.